Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. Today we are talking about the top 5 horror movies that aren't actually horror movies. Um, these are, of course just my opinions. If you have your own opinions, leave them down there in the comments below. The first two on the list I don't actually have, so I'm going to try and put up a picture right here. And the first one is Full Metal Jacket. Uh, if you're a fan of the channel, you will know I don't like Stanley Kubrick movies. Um, I, I don't see what the big fuss is about him, but Full Metal Jacket is one of those movies that he got the first half right at least. As as soon as, and there's going to be, spo I should go ahead and say spoilers for every movie that I'm going to be talking about. Um, in Full Metal Jacket, as soon as Pyle kills himself, I, that's the end of the movie for me. I don't sit around and watch the rest of it, that's it. That is Full Metal Jacket to me. In fact, I couldn't even tell you what happens in the second half of the movie. But uh, his, perf uh, was it D'Onofrio, I think it is? His performance there on the toilet um, with the gun is absolutely horrifying. And that's why I put it at number five. At number four, we have The Secret of Nim. Um, the, the only thing I really remember about this movie um, is how terrified I was as a child and even a young adult watching this with the, uh, the different... Uh, I guess that, what was it, a, a crow? Not not the crow, there was like a, no, like an old rat. I know the crow plays with the string and the yarn. That was that was cute. But there was like an old rat with like wispiness coming out. But there was some terrifying images in there. When I brought this movie up on Twitter, everybody brought up Watership Down. I have neither seen the movie, the Netflix special, or read the book, which I'm going to try and find at some point in time because I have it around here somewhere and I want to try and read it. Um, but I'm not going to watch any of the movies until I actually do that. Maybe I'll do a book versus movie episode. Yeah, I still got to do Witches of Eastwick. Anyways, so next up are movies I actually have. So, oh, I grabbed the wrong one. We're just going to have to deal with it. But uh, The Dark Knight is another one. Heath Ledger's performance. This is The Dark Knight Rises. Please just completely ignore that. Um, but Heath Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight always has bothered me. Um, it's especially him dying afterward. There's, or actually, it was it was during the end of production, I think, because they had to CGI something with him, if I remember correctly. But Heath Ledger's performance of the Joker gets underneath my skin, especially when the the scene that really really bothers me is when they're at the party and he comes up and he grabs Maggie Gyllenhaal and you know messes with her or Rachel whatever. Um, no, was it Maggie? I don't know. I can't remember. Fuss me down there. It's been ages since I've seen the movie. But what stands out and the most important thing about it is Heath Ledger's performance of the Joker. That really, I, I think it was the, the way his makeup is. I have a, I have a thing about clowns anyways. Not a, not a huge phobia, but I really like being scared. It's one of my, I guess, I don't know, not, not pet peeves, but um, a clown with bad makeup terrifies me, but I like seeing clowns like that for the same reason I get on roller coasters. You get me? Alright, next up, these last two, if these are on anybody else's list, I would be impressed. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Um, this movie does what any good horror movie or novel or any horror whatsoever does, gives you that false sense of security. And yes, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Um, but then the Candyman comes on screen. This dude has terrified me since I first saw this as a child. I got goosebumps right now just just thinking about him. The way he comes through town, calling his you know his call, saying his his deal, his cart, the way the slats come down, and you see that it's actually a prison. I was one of those kids that was scared of the ice cream man. It's like what does he have in that you know in that even before even before I was old enough to to think about stuff like that. I would always wonder, what in the world does he have back there? It can't just be ice cream, right? There's got to be something else back there. And it was there was this shade of mystery. And then I watched Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and this dude has a literal cage underneath his candy cart. But yeah, the, it was a false sense of security. The movie's like three hours long. I think the dude comes in about the uh, two-hour mark, maybe less than that. And I was just, I'm terrified of it. Last, certainly not least, my number one pick here is a movie that bothers me to my core 
and it has absolutely nothing to do with religion. I think it is, I think this movie is the best horror movie ever made. And not just the best horror film, um, let's see, the, the best horror film that, uh, uh, that's not a horror film. I think it is, I personally feel that it is my favorite horror movie, and that is The Passion of the Christ. Uh, not Saw, not Hostel, none of those, none of those movies affect me like this one does. It has nothing to do with religion, I don't believe in, I don't believe Jesus Christ was a savior or anything like that. If you, if you ask me, I'm an atheist. But, with, with this movie, there is something so visceral and so upsetting about the story and the way Mel Gibson put it to, to screen. Not a huge fan of Mel Gibson, but, or his direction. I don't like Braveheart, I don't like any of The Patriot, I don't like any of those other movies. But I do like this movie because it is terrifying. I went to go see it in theaters three times. Twice with my wife. Um, the third time I went by myself because it was such a, 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 such a visceral experience. And the first time, I was uncomfortable. And if you know me at all, you know I like being, I, I like being made to feel uncomfortable by the content that I consume, whether it be books, movies, or whatever. So that's my top five horror movies that are not horror movies. I would love to hear uh, your top five, ten, twenty, whatever. Leave them down in the comments below. If you want to make your own video, make sure to tag me either on Twitter or link down there in the doobly-doo. Spam detection might catch it, but I will try and go ahead and approve it. Um, I don't. I only check it once a week, though, so don't be mad at me if your comment doesn't show up. But anyways, until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Y'all, it is hotter than geriatric porn out here.